all right today um, and yesterday, but that doesn't mean last week wasn't really, really hard. It's been like a roller coaster for me. Dr. Christy Hagens is a Sacramento psychologist who specializes in racial trauma. She's well versed helping and healing communities of color. But this year, she's also working on self-care. We started 2020, at least for me, very excited about the possibilities, what it would bring, and all of the, the pandemics, right, in terms of the COVID-19, the civil unrest, the, the racism that we've been experiencing, uh, the wildfires, right? It's just been this uh, sense of not knowing what's coming next um, and sometimes feeling as though, okay, I'm getting through, I'm making it, and then bam, you know, you come kind of hit the ground. And then in other moments, I get very uh, confident about our resilience and our strength. There's strength in numbers. It's why Hagen's created Safe Black Space, a place where African-Americans can find healing from the stress of racism. Safe Black Space really emerged um, after Stefan Clark was killed. As a black psychologist myself, um, I had been aware of just some of the resources that could be available for, for our community in particular and really heard a call um, from our community uh, about how we were responding and reacting and feeling to the killing of this brother in his grandmother's backyard, unarmed, shot eight times. Today is a special day. For the first time since COVID-19 separated them in March, Hagen's is meeting with two other members, Dr. Tia Hairston and Dr. Jacqueline Olison in person. I didn't really think that I really needed a space to be able to just talk about things that you know you can't talk about in mixed company but I, I did and so by being able to express how hurt I might be by some of the microaggressions I might have been experiencing or how much it would break my heart to see someone being murdered senselessly by someone who's supposed to protect us um, I don't know I always get emotional thinking about it but it, it made me feel lighter somehow um, better, stronger, safer. I was a someone who um, protested a lot. And I was just tired of that energy, just the anger and the rage um, that I felt when I was protesting and demonstrating. And I felt like I needed something else. Meetings used to be in person and scattered throughout Sacramento churches and community centers. But like other community-based groups, those meetings are now held online. And there's a silver lining in that. So we use many of the same components, which is, again, culturally relevant, African-based um, strategies for healing and um, valuing who we are and, and other things. But, but we do it online. And what we found is um, we've actually had almost more uh, participation because we can reach so many different places. So it's been exciting to um, kind of take a look at who our attendees have been. I mean, we've had people from the UK, from Nigeria, from um, all across the states. And with racial tensions at an all time high, there is certainly a need for a place to speak freely. And as Hagen's puts it, without judgment. Part of the work with Safe Black Space is around helping black people understand and value that that essence, that 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 humanness, that that greatness within them. And so that hope for me is around again reconnecting to knowing that that things are rotating. There's a divine order to things. All of the things around race, they've always been there, but I just don't think people really had you know, they didn't pay attention to it because they could do other things. But now you don't have those outlets. Everything is really in front of your face and you just have no choice. You're forced to deal with it. The George Floyd incident, I mean, there had been so many. Eric Garner, everything. Philando Castile, Sandra Bland, but just watching that scene and people begging for mercy and no one caring, I think, I think people had had enough. I've experienced a lot just in my own life. I was in Missouri when Michael Brown was killed. I, I went to the University of Missouri, actually just graduated from there. So I went to demonstrations there and protested in, in Ferguson. Um, I was in Mississippi when um, Trayvon Mer Martin was murdered. As a mother of two young black sons, Hairston is now fighting for their future. It's scary. It's very scary. Um, because they're so innocent. 
right? This is how they all start off, just very innocent and beautiful, right? His energy, his spirit is beautiful. If you can't already tell, he's very chill. But once he grows up, I mean, we, we see research that by the time they're five, they're already being, you know, um, looked at as troublemakers or things like that. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm still grappling with how am I going to change the course of their lives, the trajectory of their lives under the current circumstances that we live. When we see history repeating itself, right? When I hear my elders talking about, you know, we've seen this before. We experienced this in the 60s, in the 50s. Um, it's hard to feel hopeful because it's like, it hasn't changed very much. It's time for change. So I wanna urge each and every one of us to find ways to renew and restore ourselves because so much of the world, again, feels so very uncertain. And with that, to, um, to really support and allow folks of color, for example, black people, to do what we need to do to take care of ourselves. Safe black space, a place for self-care, change, community, and finding hope in troubling times.